Now we are going to test for the ratio of the two variances. So test for variances. So we are going to import these and probably we can make use of the same sample steps. So import numpy, you will also import stats and your maybe let us write sample 1. Sample 1 is from normal distribution. You are taking a sample with mean 5, variance 4 and size. Sample size would be 20. Similarly, sample 2 here again would be of suppose it is we can change here. We can make it 5. Mean can be same and here let us make it 3 and 20. Okay. Now, suppose in this, let us consider the two tail test because we have been working with right tail test for the previous two, two tail test. So, we have to define the function first, two tailed variance test. So, here it would be sample one, sample two, these are the arguments. Okay, and alpha value would be 0 0.05. Now you have to write what will be variance 1, right? Sample variance of both the samples, right? So variance 1 and variance 2, this, this can store your variances. So it would be np dot var sample 1, comma, ddf is 1. And the other one same way, np dot var sample two ddof as one. Okay, so we we have calculated the sample variance s one square, and this is your s two square. Now, what is your f star? F star is basically the ratio of these two. So variance of one divided by variance of two. Right. Then you have degree of freedom also, df1, df2 also. So df1 would be the length of the first sample. So that we already have as 20. You can directly reuse it or maybe you can give this command. So length this n1 minus 1. Okay, so note that here it would be minus 1 and here also it would be minus 1 lower critical value critical value lower would be stats dot t dot ppf alpha by 2 and degree of freedom 1 and degree of freedom for the second one right n1 minus 1 and n2 minus 1 likewise so here we are focusing on the f distribution so it will look at the those values which are less than alpha by 2 to the left of that and similarly critical value for upper upper tail here upper tail here would be 1 minus of alpha by 2 okay and it will be returning f star and it will compare if f star is less than or equal to your critical value that is the lower critical value or if star is greater than or equal to the upper critical value right so in this region basically we reject if f star is less than your f 1 minus alpha by 2 and it is greater than f alpha by 2. So, in that only we accept otherwise we reject. So, once you have defined the function you can call this function and print the result. So, result would be calculated using this function. And let us print 
the two-tailed F statistic it is F star and you are going to reject H naught so let us see what it prints it would be the result over here so the test statistic value comes out as 0.981 and you are going to reject the null hypothesis because that is true okay it means it falls in the rejection region and you reject the null hypothesis if your f statistic is less than or equal to f1 minus alpha by 2 or if it is greater than f alpha by 2 okay so this is how you can test for variances this is just for two tail likewise you can write for one tail and uh, which includes right and left tail so you can do it accordingly next we will look for the test for proportion so we put this numpy and sample one here would be np dot random so it will going to select it will take values between 0 and 1 0 and 1 it, not between it will take values 0 and 1 size here would be 100 and the p values would be 0.3 and 0.7 okay so it means it will go it is going to generate a random sample of 100 observations with two possible outcomes that is 0 and 1 and the probability of choosing 0 would be 0.3 and probability for choosing 1 would be 0.7 so basically this would simulate a binary outcome like a coin tossing or pass or fail test so likewise you can define for the second sample also so we can reuse this So here we can take the sample size as 120 and let us change the probabilities 0.4 and 0.6. Okay. Now if I have to conduct a right tail test suppose, then I need to first of all define a function right tailed proportion. So here it would be sample 1 sample 2 these are the arguments that we give p naught will be the hypothesized difference of the two proportions and alpha here would be 0 0.05 so we can calculate your p1 hat p2 hat that is the sample proportions so here we will reuse this mean command for the numpy library sample one and again np dot mean sample two so n1 n2 so n1 would be the length of the first sample and n2 would be the length of the second sample Once you have written this, now you can find the test statistic, which is basically the difference in the numerator. If you can recollect, it is p1 hat minus p2 hat minus the hypothesized mean difference that is p0 in, in the denominator you divide by the standard error. Okay, so let me mention the numerator first. It would be p1, p1 hat minus p2 hat minus p naught it will be divided by square root of this so here it would be p1 hat into 1 minus p1 hat whole divided by n1 plus same thing for p2 hat also we will have p2 hat 1 minus p2 hat it will be divided by n2 okay 
So now you will calculate the critical value. Stats because we know that here we can use the normal approximation. So stats dot norm dot ppf the percent point function. Here it would be one minus alpha, and it would return the z star value, and it will compare the z star if z star is greater than equal to your critical value. Okay. So finally, we can call this function. Result would be sorry, p naught. I should have defined here. P naught would be suppose it is point one. So let us see what is the z star value. It is minus one point seven three, and the result that you are getting is false. It means you fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay, and since it is a right tail test, you fail to reject the null hypothesis. It means that the difference of the two proportions, that is my p one minus p two, is going to be less than or equal to point one. So your null hypothesis basically the claim is correct. So, so this way you can perform different tests whenever you have two samples. Also, so we have seen for difference of the means, for the ratio of the two variances, and for the difference of the two proportions. Also, now we are going to look at chi-square test of independence. Chi-square test of independence. Okay, so we can import numpy. As np and from scipy dot stats import chi to this contingency. Okay, so basically it has this nice function already defined in scipy dot stats because here you can directly use this function from this module. In order to perform your chi-square test of independence, okay. So let us consider the observed data is. Let me just mention observed data is in the form of an array. So here we have. Suppose then the next one, suppose is fifty, thirty, and forty. We can take ten, forty, and ten. So these are the observed points. Okay. So basically, we have written it in the form of a matrix. Okay, so these are basically your observed frequencies in each category for a chi-square test. You can see that it is like a three by three matrix format. Okay, so observed data is given to you. So it means you have two categorical variables, and each of them have three levels. Now you are going to perform your chi-square test of independence. So it is easy to do that because we already have that function. Now p value will also be computed. Degrees of freedom would be there, and what will be the expected frequencies here? We will use this function on observed data. Okay. So here, this chi two and this is a test statistic for the chi square test. The p value will be used. Then it will indicate the probability of observing the data if the null hypothesis is true, degrees of freedom for that test, and the expected frequencies, which are calculated based on the null hypo, based on the observed data, 
assuming that the null hypothesis is true right now you can print your results if you want to print suppose your chi squared test statistic and all of them so maybe we can just first of all check if the p value if p value is less than alpha you will print what it will print it will print reject the null hypothesis reject the null hypothesis there is a significant association between the two categorical variables okay else what it will print else print fail to reject no significant association sorry it should be p underscore So, yeah, if I should just compare it with 0 0.05 or I could have defined alpha beforehand. So, you reject the null hypothesis there is and conclude that there is a significant association between the two categorical variables. So, here you are rejecting the null hypothesis. It means that the p-value that you have obtained is less than 0 0.05. So, if let us see what is okay. So, it is very small. Okay. So, these are your expected values. Okay. So, these are your observed and you can see that this is how you get your expected frequencies. So if you want to give a proper print command, you can give for the chi square test statistic first, you can give then print p value, print the degrees of freedom, print the expected frequencies and then you can print this expected or you can just directly see what is happening over here. So, this is how you can perform your chi square test of independence by just simply using this function from scipy.stats module. So, it is easy. Likewise, let us see for chi-square goodness of fit test. So, import numpy as np that will be there and from scipy.stats import chi-square because we are going to deal with the chi-square distribution. Now, let the observed counts you can consider 40, 30, 30 suppose these you can consider them as the observed count suppose for the three colors maybe red green or blue okay then what will be the expected proportion maybe i can just remove this so expected proportion would be what np so here 1 by 3 for each of them okay so we are not biased towards anyone so each of them have an equal equal proportion of occurrence and p dot array so here now the what will be the total number of observations total observations will be np dot sum of your observed counts that you have over here okay and your expected counts e is calculated by multiplying 
n that is the total number by the corresponding pi so these are your pi's expected proportion for each of them it is 1 by 3 so here it would be total observed multiplied by expected prop okay so first you have the observed counts then you have your expected proportions for each event under the null hypothesis okay so we are assuming that each event is equally likely so proportion is 1 by 3 for each of them then here we are calculating the total number of observations we sum up all the observed counts and expected one will be calculating the expected counts for each event based on the total observations and the expected proportions so you are going to multiply them in order to get the expected counts okay now you can perform your chi square test so chi 2 start and the p value so here we will use this chi square function chi square so f observed these will be the observed counts and your f expected would be the expected counts okay so if you want to see these it is t and your p value over here is 0.367 so obviously if you take alpha as 0.05 you fail to reject the null hypothesis okay so if you fail to reject the null hypothesis it means that the observed distribution does not differ significantly okay so you can you can write the command for um, comparing p value with the alpha value as we have done here okay so this is just a simple scenario that we have taken obviously you can think of it for different situation where you will be altering this observations over here okay so likewise you can get the answer and you can see that finding these is very simple right and in fact the theory behind them is also very easy to understand so this basically completes your week 9 for hypothesis testing in the next week you are going to learn about bootstrapping and how do you do or perform hypothesis test when the population is not necessarily normally distributed right it might be coming from some other distributions or you might not even have an idea that from which distribution is it coming right so in such situations we use bootstrap technique and that we will cover in your week 10 and in the last two weeks we will be talking about confidence interval estimation thank you